So hi everyone. Um, before start, before we start, um, if you guys have any questions or if you don't understand what I'm saying, or if you don't agree with what I'm saying, or if you have your opinions and you want to expand something that I'm saying here, feel free to interrupt me. Uh, don't just just say whatever you want to say. It's uh, I wanted to make it as free, this as free as possible. And thank you to all the organizers. Uh, they, they're donating their time to make this happen. Um, so thanks to them. Also the volunteers. So thank you guys. Uh, whenever you can, please say thanks to them. Um, so the, the format of this talk will be, uh, I'll be answering questions, simple questions, and there are going to be 18 questions um, and it's just going to be they're, they're going to be simple uh, mostly uh, I'll be showing some code and also concepts so uh, the intention is not to give uh, full knowledge of how to build a, a, a WordPress block I think it's more like to give directions on, on where to go if you, if you want to build one or, or get a better idea of what Gutenberg is. I think everyone here in this room will have uh, something to take from this presentation. That's, that's my intention here. And I'll be available, like, if, uh, this, the slides are going to be uh, online. They're online right now, by the way. And uh, also the code that I'm going to be using, it's also going to be available. So the rest of the questions and uh, the first question is uh, what is Gutenberg? You're going to hear many many different ways to describe what Gutenberg is. Uh, my version is it's just a, a different way to edit content in WordPress. That's it. This here on the left is uh, how the editor used to look like and on the right is the Gutenberg way which is just, so here is just like sequential text. You write and you format your text. And on that way, you're just building blocks. Your content is, is, your content is divided in blocks. And you just rearrange them, you can reuse them. On the left side here, you cannot, it's, it's really hard to reuse stuff, right? Uh, but on the right side, you can, it's easy. And they encourage you to uh, reuse content, reuse uh, templates and stuff like that. So, expanding that, uh, the right uh, screen there, it's here. It doesn't look like blocks, but th these are blocks. The top one is a block, is the classic block, which behaves the same way as the old editor. What you see here, all the capabilities, called the capabilities of formatting, they're also there, right? You can have the same experience on that block, but you can have way more. The image block, which is a simple block that will add an image. There is the list block. It's just a block that will list stuff, right? Code block, and uh, what else? And this, by the way, can you, yeah. It, there is a columns block. So this columns block is dividing, uh, so dividing the content in two. Left column, uh, right column. This is a block. A simple one is a button. A button can be a block. It's a small, small, simple block. And you can, you have the options here. See how I'm, I'm pressing stuff. I'm manipulating. And all these options, they're only relevant to buttons. You're not going to find more options than you need here, right? It's just like the color, uh, how you want the text to, sh to show, and the alignment of this button. So these are all the blocks that are available uh, inside Gutenberg right now. There are a lot of them. Um, and they're really cool to play with. Uh, if you install, uh, if you have the latest version of WordPress, it will come all with all this stuff, right? And these are, that's probably one of my favorite parts, uh, all these embed ones. Okay, and why would I need to uh, build my own Gutenberg block? Why would I need to know about that? Um, there are some cases. I think um, 
sometimes you want a specific block, you want a specific structure that is not there by default. Uh, you can try to create your own. That's one of the reasons. Um, and also sometimes I think the best one is you can modify existing blocks. So there, there will be, there are going to be plugins that will provide you with blocks. And sometimes you want to tweak them a little bit. And uh, if you know how to, b to build a block, you also know how to modify it. I think that's really uh, powerful. And also, ah, by the way, um, there's a way to search inside the WordPress uh, marketplace, the, the place to search for plugins in WordPress. There's a way to search for plugins that will also give you blocks. There are block uh, enabled uh, plugins. So if you go here, Anyway, pretend that it's showing, oh, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> now maybe you're, uh, anyway, uh, it's just going to show you, yeah. All these plugins here, they are not plugins that will only provide you with blocks. They will also have some blocks available uh, or they will modify existing blocks and stuff like that. And Yoast, for example, uh, has interesting blocks in the, in the latest versions. I, I think an FAQ block. And, uh, they provide you the blocks and the, with the advantage that they will also provide you uh, the <coughs> SEO for them. So I think Yoast has two kind of structured blocks. One is uh, FAQ and the other one is a how-to. Very specific. If you want to uh, format your content, your content in this way, uh, Yoast will provide you blocks for that. Head back to the presentation. Is it a plugin? Is it a theme? It's it's not a plugin. It's not a plug. It's not a theme. Um, it it's something that can live inside a plugin, or it can live inside a theme too. Um, it depends. Sometimes uh, you want to create your theme with with blocks, and sometimes you want to uh, create your plugin with blocks so you can reuse it. It's up to, it depends on the problem you have in hand. Um, so it depends. The answer for that is it depends. Okay. So the one we are going to build, one of the first, it's very, very, very simple block that we're going to build is going to be this one, hello block. And that's how the whole workflow. So I'm here, I'm adding the block. I'm searching for it. And, um, okay, basic block. Once I click, it just displays it. It's just text. I cannot even edit this part, not in the editor. And then once I publish, I have the same content that I was seeing in the editor there. What language does should I know? Uh, JavaScript, a lot of the code of a block will be inside JavaScript. PHP, not so much. Um, it's going to be kind of standard uh, way of, or, of dealing with PHP code um, for different plugins. But JavaScript, is, it's where uh, the heavy logic is. And CSS, if you want to style, make your uh, block look pretty, CSS. What's a good way to start a Gutenberg block? Um, so I think there are two ways. One of them is use this uh, repo here on GitHub. It's maintained by the WordPress people. It's called uh, Gutenberg Examples. And they, they have like one, two, three, four, like around 10 plugins that they showcase the capabilities of Gutenberg. And these are the ones, by the way, the, the code that I'm going to show here are modifications of some of these plugins here. Um, really simple, really straightforward, and, and one of the best ways to know, um, to learn how to build them. Another way to start a Gutenberg uh, block from scratch is using 
uh, this tool here called Create Guten Block by uh, this guy here, Ahmed Awais. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, if you guys are familiar with React, there is a tool, there is a similar tool for React called Create React App. That is kind of just gives you the initial structure of a React project. This is the same kind of idea. It's just a, an NPM, a use NPM to, to start and it's going to create a basic structure for you so you can just uh, give the, the name you want and it's going to give you the builders, all, all the stuff that you're going to need. Here is the, the repo on GitHub, if you guys want to check out. Um, okay, now let's let's start building it then. Remember that uh, block that I showed you here? This guy here. Once you publish, that's what you see. That Gutenberg block is here. Just this code, right? One file, one PHP file, and one JavaScript file. That's it. You can, that's like the bare minimum for, uh, for a block. Here is the, the example again. You guys saw that. Okay, and now I'm going to try. I'm going to try to explain how that, uh, what's what's going on in this uh, in this code. Um, so the PHP part, this file here should be living inside a plugin. In this case, will be inside a plugin. Okay, so the index.php.php file. This call here. Probably some of you are familiar with it. Uh, it's just the old way to enqueue uh, scripts in WordPress, right? You're just defining an alias, and you're going to define a, oops, a path to a JavaScript file. And here, the dependencies of this JavaScript file. This is not new. This was always like it's been part of uh, WordPress for a long time. You're registering a JavaScript file, and this JavaScript file happens to be the one that is going to define your block. So a lot of the heavy logic is going to be inside this JavaScript here. Here, this call here, register block type, that's the new one. You're saying that uh, you're giving a, a name to your block, we have a prefix. A prefix is important here because of collision, right? Because uh, you don't want, uh, like, to, when you're creating a block, you don't want to have the same name of a previously created block or a plugin that is going to, in the future, have the same brilliant idea of naming a block block or something, you know? Like, just, just prefix with uh, the name of your company or something or your last name. Um, Remember this part here? We're going to come back to it later. And in, in the part that I say editor script basic block, what is basic block is binding to this guy here. Whatever script I define here, the alias is going to be the same one that I'm going to describe here. So this binds to this here. And this is just old like regular WordPress uh, initialization plugin stuff, right? So that's the new part, the JS part. Inside your JavaScript file, you have, remember uh, on the last slide, the previous slide here, whatever name you defined is going to be used again here, right? And these are the attributes and um, functions of your block. 
All the blocks will need an edit function and a save function and some attributes. Basically, that's that's how they that's the basic structure of them. Uh, the title is going to be how it's going to be presented on the screen. When you, when I search for a block, I can I will type basic spa, space block, and I'm going to have my block available there. The category is just a way to organize the blocks. What you saw on the example that uh, blocks are divided because there are so many blocks, they kind of divide it then into uh, categories. So it's it's kind of easier to to go through them. The added function is how the the block is going to behave inside Gutenberg screen. When you are editing, you are defining this behavior here. The save function is saying when I hit publish, how that block that I'm, I'm editing there is going to be stored in the database. So here's the same thing. I'm creating an element, P, a paragraph. And the content, the, the thing that will go inside this paragraph is hello block. When I save it, I'm, say, I'm saying generate a piece of HTML with a paragraph, and the content of this paragraph is going to be hello block. I can't edit this in the editor, nothing like that. It's just a static, dumb block. Again. I'm going to type uh, basic block. No, I'm going to, yeah, there it is. Any questions? Cool. So the question is, uh, what happens if I put a hashtag Like here, you can. We're going to see better examples of this later. Actually, you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to build your HTML in this part, in the save function, in the edit function as well. That's going to be the next example. Any other questions? Troubleshooting tip is like if you're trying to create a block and somehow your block is not working. I think right now there's uh, WordPress is not really going to tell you, oh, there's something broken. I'm not going to display anything. So look for uh, Chrome Developer Tools. Always be searching for that, and that happened with me a lot when I was preparing this presentation. I was expecting the block to be there to be searchable, but it was not. So I opened Chrome and it was like, oh, there's an error in your JavaScript. Because of the, the heavy logic is in JavaScript, right? Whatever errors that are going to be there, they're going to be JavaScript. OK. Can we make this simpler? And the answer, thank God, is yes. Uh, this is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with React, but there are nicer ways to. Uh, to write this code, and, um, and it, is, it helps to understand better too, I think, because it gets rid of, of a lot of, uh, it just gets smaller. Uh, and it, I think for me, it makes it, I can understand it better when it's kind of a smaller and I can kind of understand what's, what goes where. Okay. So that, remember this guy here? It can come this. It's way shorter, and that's exact, I think that was your question. If I could uh, put actual actual HTML there, yes, you can. But if you guys know JavaScript, you know this is insane. Like you like you shouldn't put HTML uh, tags in the middle of your JavaScript code. So that's where we talk about. Uh, Okay, here again, the comparison. This two, they do the same thing, the very same thing. If I, if I 
whatever block I was building here is going to display the same way in the Gutenberg editor and it's going to display the same way uh, when I publish. And again, this part here, having HTML in the middle of your JavaScript code, this is called JSX. Um, it's just a, it's not part of, of JavaScript. It's like an extended uh, way to, to write JavaScript code. And you need it, we actually need a tool that will take this code and will transform this code in something that your browser can understand. If you try to run this in the browser, you're, it's going to break. It doesn't work. Browsers can't understand this. So we need a tool to get this code and make something else. Another uh, concept is uh, yes, next. Um, it's just like, I think developers, they want to be always using the latest versions of, uh, of, of JavaScript. We, we don't want to uh, really, uh, like be always thinking about IE11, for example. Uh, the code that I'm writing in JavaScript has to be compatible with IE11, this classic problem. And <clears throat> because we want to be using this thing here, right? We want to be using the latest uh, stuff available for JavaScript. And uh, if you go back here, edit, this way of writing uh, JavaScript also doesn't work in IE11. If you try to write a function in the middle of... Uh, of this object here is going to break. Modern browsers will take that, but not IE11. So you need a way to make uh, your browser or any browser, including IE11, understand this craziness here and this kind of modern syntax of JavaScript. And that's uh, that's where we use Babel and. Um, Webpack. By the way, you don't have to understand, have a deep understanding of what Babel is or Webpack. In the, in, the two, in the two projects that I showed on how to start a Gutenberg block, they are provided with all the configurations for you. You just need to run npm build or whatever. So these two are going to get your very cool code that your browser can't understand and will produce a bigger file with lots of, of JavaScript you don't really need to read, but your browser will understand. So this, these two are kind of doing the translation work. And I'm going to show you how uh, the two side by side, these files in the end are going to do the same thing. It's not adding any functionality. So this tiny guy here, browser can't understand this. A developer can, I can, but the browser will understand this guy here and they do the same thing. It's just one is the translation, it's a translated version of the other. Okay, any questions on, on this part? Um, okay, and the next block is, um, and the last one too, is uh, if I want a block that I can edit. I think that's more uh, useful uh, to understand how I can create a block that the user can go inside Gutenberg and add some information inside the block. This one is a dumb block, but I want one that, can, that I can add information. So I want, so that's my uh, editable uh, block. I didn't uh, format the font. So whatever I typed, it was already in that format. You, you see like black back, background and white letters. It comes with style already. 
I don't need to rely on the user to, to add the proper style. And also Comic Sans, by the way. Right? The proper font for that. Is it, is it showing when I publish or not? Woof. Yeah, once I hit publish, what I'm seeing there is exactly what I get in the front end. And I think that's one of the major advantages of Gutenberg. <coughs> kind of gets the experience that you're getting in the editor. It's going to look much closer in the front end. Okay, so what's so that's another block. Whatever we saw before, forget it. Um, that's a new block. Same thing, this was in the other block as well. A title, a way I can go inside uh, Gutenberg and search for this block. The category, kind, same kind of principle. This is new, is the attribute. A block will have an attribute that will hold the information that you're editing. In this case, in the case of this block, there is only one thing that I want to save here. This is static. This, is, this won't change. The user won't be able to change this beautiful image. Just uh, the content that goes here. And that's what I'm calling content. This I defined. The selector says uh, you're going to get this information the content information will come from uh, HTML and a div inside HTML. There are other ways to store this information, but the one I picked was HTML. There are other ways. You can either, I think the basic ways of storing this information is either in HTML or inside meta. I think most of the basic blocks or the blocks that will come with WordPress, they will store the information inside the HTML that is produced. And Gutenberg is smart enough to, from the HTML, make the, the Gutenberg uh, block. So it can go, whenever I save this, this is saved in pure HTML. It goes to the database as HTML. When I, when I press, uh, when I go to the page, there's no translation process happening. Whatever is in that page was already in HTML at that point. Um, so Gutenberg has to know how to rebuild the block from HTML and display in the editor. Okay, again, uh, I'm going to have an edit and save function. So this is my edit function, a little bit bigger now. And my save function again, this two. Always have this two in mind. Um, this time is a little bit, it's a little more, bit more complicated one. It has a, fra oops. It has a fragment uh, element here, which is just an element that can group other elements. Um, the image, the cat image that I'm using there, and the rich text editor, which is this guy here. Whenever I start typing here, that's a rich text uh, editor that will translate to a div. This is just on change. This is kind of React. If you guys are used to React, you're going to understand what this is doing. Uh, not going to go in much detail here, but the save uh, function will have a similar kind of code that I have in the edit one. If you're seeing, uh, the image is going to be the same. The image that I'm seeing in Gutenberg is going to be the image that I want to see in the front end, right? And also the content, this is, this is where the the black text, the text with black background and white uh, letters go on. 
Um, the style is going to be defined. I'm going to show you guys. Uh, this is inline CSS that I'm adding here. And I'm saying, whenever I save this, I want this to be saved as a div. So this will go as HTML code to the database. Again, that's how it looks, the whole thing. And the style, the style that I'm referencing here, and I'm referencing here. So they have the same style. The part that is going to be displayed in Gutenberg will have this style, and the part that is going to be um, stored in the database and later displayed in the, in the front end will have this style. And also the image style, which is this guy here. Any questions? Cool. Again, that's the block we get in the end. Okay, and that's how it looks in HTML. If you're looking at this in the front end, after you save, I'm already tired of seeing this so many times. <laughs> Sorry, can can fast forward this to give. Okay, if you press view source from the front end page, that's what you're going to see. There's nothing special in here. There's no JavaScript. It's just HTML. If you roll back, I don't know if you can do this anymore. If you if you have that uh, classic editor plugin, and you say, you know what, I don't want I don't want to use uh, Gutenberg editor anymore. I want to use the classic editor. You're still going to have this saved in your database, and it's going to display. I think it's going to display the same way. Uh, it was. If, it's, if it was a block or not, it doesn't matter. That's HTML. What was generated in the end and what's generated in the end is HTML. And that's what goes into the database and that's what is it's, it's displayed. Okay, so that's about the end of the presentation. Um, and then just some directions to go from here. Um, there are way more complicated blocks than that. Uh, there are many, many types of controls you can add in your block. And uh, so for now, we just use a simple text one, but you can go really, really crazy and add like uh, color pickers and stuff like that. Um, so, and one of them is dynamic blocks too, which, which kind of retrieves information from the back end uh, to create your block. Uh, these are the fancy blocks that I'm talking about, the next kind of next level of blocks. The attributes are where you can store the information of your block. Uh, you can find here. And one of them is an interesting one is meta. You can instead instead of storing whatever information that is in your block inside the HTML that is going to be displayed, you can store it in meta. ACF takes a lot of this complication out for you. So, uh, and that's version in version 5.8. It helps a lot. And you can define most of your block in PHP. If you're used to PHP, you don't want to mess with JavaScript or React stuff or whatever, you can use ACF. Uh, and, and they're kind of, they're, they're starting their support with, uh, with Gutenberg. But the code required for this is it's, way, way less than what I showed here. Um, so it, it's a good opportunity. I don't, I don't think you need a pro account for that. I think that the basic version will offer that. The REST API, you can build your blocks and make them uh, call the REST API in the front end. It's, it's a way of, of doing it. It's just, you can go crazy. Um, and the code is here. It's also, I, if you go to my Twitter account, uh, I'll have this there and also the presentation uh, slides. And that's it. Uh, if you guys have any questions. Um, what was this uh, babble that you mentioned briefly? So, okay, let me. So the question is what is uh, babble?
remember this code here that I showed? Um, I don't want to write that much code. Like I want to make it simpler. But uh, and then I write like this. This two. We'll do the same thing. But in this one, it's kind of easier to understand what, what's going on, what's going on there. Uh, but browsers won't understand that. It's easier for programmers to understand what's going on, but browsers won't understand it. So Bubble will get this and transform into something that browsers can understand, including IE11. IE11 is problematic, or IE, whatever IE version. It, they're usually problematic with support for JavaScript. A lot of stuff, historically, it works on all the browsers except IE11. So Bubble kind of takes this complication away, and it gets this code, and it translates to that code. That code, you don't need, you don't need to read that. You don't need to give to your fellow developer to, to read that. That's what you should be worried about. But Bubble will get whatever you write here and make um, readable for browsers. So it will make work. So as a developer, you can just worry about this, making code that, is, that makes sense for you. And uh, you, you have to run a command. This is not, this is not, uh, this doesn't happen like magic. Like you have to run, uh, build your, your JavaScript, the process of building your JavaScript, which is defined here. Uh, it will produce this JavaScript here. You had a question? Oh, you can. It's better, actually. Um, I think you can write, like, enqueue in your theme, actually, instead of associating it, associating it with the block. But actually, you can, actually, sorry. Where is the call? Um, the part that you enqueue, you're enqueuing. Um, your scripts in PHP, this part here, you can also define uh, CSS. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. You can define one CSS that is go only going to be available inside the editor and one CSS that is going to be available for uh, front end, only for that block. Okay, you. Or you can go the other way and just make it global one and you know. One question there. Uh, it's it's a request to go back to the where to go from here is light. Cool. June? Could you explain what exactly the role of the JSX is? Sure. I'll go back to this later. Uh, so uh, the request was to go uh, to explain again what is uh, JSX. The role, yeah, it's just to write, so. Uh, because I thought that JS was doing that part, but you said the Barbara, Barbara was doing that part. So no, 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 uh, this, sorry. The, you're writing this code, which makes sense for the developers, or like it's, it's easier to understand than this. If you look at this, you say, oh, this is going to return a paragraph with hello body inside. When you look at this here, it's like, eh, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's just, it, it makes more readable for developers, but the browser won't understand it. So what is the difference between the JSX and Bubble? So Bubble is a tool. Uh, the, the, the question is, what's the difference between JSX and Bubble? So Bubble is a tool that was going to get this guy here, the, um, this very nice code that the browser can't understand, and make the browser and make something else, a translated version of this. 
you get this block here, you're nice with JSX, you run Bubble, um, and it becomes another file. That will do the same thing. But this one, the browser will understand. So once you read, cool. Uh, get this, you run npm run build, it generates this. Um, and it's hard to read this. Don't, 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 you don't need to read that. But it does the same thing, right? This, it will do the first thing. More question? Can you go back to the slide you had before that the question came up? One more. Where it has a JSX and, and the regular uh, JavaScript uh, next to each other. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, okay, this one? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, no, the one that has like how you. Oh, the, the two versions. Okay. okay. Yeah. The long version and the, the so I think short version. version. This is, yeah, this is valid. And then Your browser problem. can understand that. Well, and what's that? Your browser can understand yeah. that. Yeah. And understand this here. Unfortunately, that's how people used to have to write HTML with JavaScript. Because JS came along, JSX came along and made that a little easier. And then Babel just translates it from JSX into JavaScript. And that's not a requirement. You can write your Gutenberg blocks like this and get this bubble thing out of the way. Uh, up to you, right? If you if you're used if you get used to this, go crazy. You're eliminating like this building uh, pro, uh, like step out of your workflow, which is good. Uh, but this one, I I feel it's it's kind of nice to write stuff like that. Uh, like it's shorter. You get a better sense of what's going on. You don't need to remember the syntax here. Element dot creator. Uh, uh, uh. Any other question? Um, how do you uh, manage um, updating Gutenberg blocks? Um, like, you know, like when you have a block validation error. So the question is, uh, how do I manage to update Gutenberg blocks without uh, validation errors? The, the answer for that is, I don't know. Uh, I, had problems with, I had problems with that, too. And I think that's one of the biggest problems with uh, Gutenberg. Um, because this happens when you write a block, let's suppose we're writing this, and all of a sudden I say, oh no, there's not a p tag, it's an h1 tag, and I have to update my block. And I think that's where you get uh, the validation errors, right? If, if there's anyone that knows how to manage this, I sincerely don't. Yes. It's a good point. Uh, you can do server side. You can rely less on writing uh, JavaScript code and do more server uh, server side code, which is what I mean in this server rendering blocks. Uh, if you guys want to look with more detail, what it what it will do. Um, but yeah, you can resolve when you have these validation errors. You can resolve the conflict and stuff, and it's never it's never. A, it offers you, right? Like you have a validation error, say you want to get rid, like it gives you like two options and you can... Yeah, convert to HTML. Yeah, convert to HTML. Yeah. Sorry. I think that would be kind of if you get to a client and they were to see an error like that. They're going to freak out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have, I'm sorry. I don't have, a, I don't have an answer for that. And I think I, I also lost there. As much as, yeah. Um, but I think at some point they might attack this problem, uh, I hope. Uh, or if they did already, I don't know. Cool. Any other question? I think ACF as well. If you use ACF to create our blocks, uh, you're probably not going to have, because you don't have to write any JavaScript code. 
if you're using ACF to write your blocks, uh, you, you'll probably have, you're probably going to have less of these problems, I think. More questions? All right. Thank you. And here's all the information uh, you can find. Yeah. On on my Twitter, the uh, the slides are going to be there, and uh, my repo with the code samples that I use here. Uh, feel free to contact me if uh, you have any questions. <laughs> I love this guy. It's from uh, from uh, Instagram, Wilfred Warrior. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, don't 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 feel shy um, to contact me. Cool. Thank you.